Um, welcome back to the For You podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, one of my absolute favorite TikTokers uh, and streamers, Positive Energy, Mr. Woo Woo. How are you doing today? Thank you so much, uh, brother. Uh, I'm doing fantastic, man. Thank you so much. I ironically, um, or not ironically, I would say this is the way of the world working. But I actually had my like one of my best ever streams today. So I think this is just mm. a wonderful day. So thank you for having me. Yeah, I did see that. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I just I did, I don't really see a lot of uh, of the origin of uh mr Wu, Wu. how did how did you become playing video games and then then come into the content creation sure 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 i mean this is a question that has that, that has to go way back like this answer is way back and before we continue i know i told you this before we started but guys please excuse me for mm-hmm. the way my face looks but i was just at the dentist and this whole side of my face is numb i can't feel anything so that's why my lip kind of looks weird so <laughs> do excuse me <laughs> um and if I have a lisp or anything, so sorry guys. But yeah, um, go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna throw it all the way back okay. years before you were even born. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that old, okay. I'm I'm only 27. I know talking to you at the younger age, 27 sounds like a light year away. So you're 18. So I'm nine years older than you. Somebody told me they're nine years older than me. I'm like you're old, but <laughs> trust me, I'm not that old, okay. I grew up with the internet too. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna throw it back to like maybe 1990 nine okay so my dad got us a nintendo 64 for me my sister and i was just in love with this thing before that i had no idea what a video game was but he got us this nintendo 64 and he kind of got it for himself but he just fell in love with it and we played it all the time my sister and i and here's here's the here's the moment of where i was like i want to do games for the rest of my life um i don't know if you've ever watched it but 101 dalmatian dogs have you ever watched that movie i have not Okay, so it's an old, old Disney movie, okay? Mm -hmm. And in the beginning of one of them, I forgot which one it was because there's like two or three of them. In the beginning of one of them, the dad of like the main family, his job is in video games, okay? And uh, he he needs to impress like, he has like this huge important meeting and he has to impress this guy who's going to come and write his video game. And basically this kid, this guy has always been right. Anytime this guy like, like plays and rates a video game whatever he says kind of like the markets take off takes off with so if he says to get a video game is good then like it's gonna pop off in, in the movie okay so he walks into this meeting and he's so surprised because the person is a kid he's like a 10 year old kid or something and then he literally sits down and he tries a game and he's like yeah the game's okay and then that's when i was like dude this guy's playing video games and getting paid like this is what i need to do with my life and then that's always been in the back of my head forever and I continued to play video games for the rest of my life till this day. But my journey of video games is basically the Nintendo 64. And then I was a Sony guy my whole life. I never had an Xbox till like a couple of years ago. I bought a 360. I've literally played it for one week. I bought Gears of War, <laughs> played it for one week. And I swear I've not touched it since. And this was like 2012. Sony guy my whole life. I have the whole PlayStation family from PlayStation 1 to the PS2 to the PSP, PS3, PS4. Still trying to get a PS5. Somebody can hook me up. Let me know. I'll pay retail for it. But yeah, um, that's how kind of my like my initial step into video games was back then. And that's when I was like, dude, if I can do video games for the rest of my life, that would be fun, wonderful. But it was always in the back of my head because I'm always like, it's such an unattainable goal. Like, no way I can do this. And I, I love YouTube. I grew up watching YouTube. Like, I grew up watching Kev Jumba. He's, like, my favorite ever YouTuber. I don't know if you know who Kev Jumba is, but he's, like, one of the OGs of YouTubers. He's, he's He fell off the face of the earth. He doesn't really do anything anymore. But Kev Jumba was, like, really who inspired me to, like, really get into YouTube. And before I started Mr. Woo Woo, well, I've had Mr. Woo, I've had the username Mr. Woo for, like, 15 years as well. Literally, maybe, like, when you were three years old. <laughs> <laughs> I got it when I got my... Actually, before I got my PS3, I've had this username maybe since like 2005. I used to play Counter Strike. Anyways, I'm kind of going all over the place, so please excuse me. I'm just giving you a little history. But uh, no one's asked me this so far, so I'm love. I'm like, I love to share this information. Uh, so yeah, back to what I was saying. Uh, so wait, what was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> what was I talking about though, for real? You no, had, I'm just joking. Wait, yeah, tell me. Uh, no, you, tell me. Tell me. You you had the Username, Mr. Woo Woo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, right before the username. Um, 
<laughs> I'm not sure. Wait, okay, wait, I'm talking about my journey. Oh, yeah, YouTube. YouTube, I Yes, remember. YouTube. YouTube. Sorry, that was a brain fart. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> so... So before, yeah, before I started Mr. Wu, I remember where I, was, where I was. Before I started Mr. Wu, I made a YouTube channel all the way in, like, 2008. And from 2008 till 2020, when I started the Mr. Wu channel that, like, everyone knows now, I've had around 10 different YouTube channels that I've tried so many different things on. Literally, it was my always, like, my biggest goal to grow an audience on YouTube. Whatever I could do, I just wanted to grow an audience on YouTube. And I tried my hardest at so many points in my life. When I was younger, I wouldn't say I tried that hard. Like I'd post periodically and just hope for a video to go viral. Mm -hmm. But like the before I started Mr. Wu, I had my own personal channel that was like under my name. No one knows what it is. I'm not gonna share it. And I busted on uh, I busted so hard, like busted my butt to try and make this channel grow. I would upload like once every two weeks. And it was like I was really taking honing my skills of videography, like creativity. It wasn't it had nothing to do with gaming. It was completely different. It was more like it wasn't even lifestyle. It was more like, it was more of like kind of like journalism related, like random things. Long story short, I tried so hard for this channel to grow. I tried for a year and a half. And at the end of it, right before I started Mr. Woo Woo, it only had like 750 subscribers. And this was me trying my best, like getting my friends to share my videos, getting my friends to like my videos. Like I tried so hard. And getting a YouTube channel to be successful is one of my biggest goals, like by far one of my biggest goals. And mm -hmm. I tried so for so many years, so hard, so many different channels, and it never worked. This 750 channel was the second biggest channel I ever had. At the time, it was the biggest. Before that, it was like 400 subscribers. Before that, it was another channel that was like 250. I tried for so long. And then this marvelous thing came around called TikTok. And that's when everything kind of just like... Whoosh, Everything in my life just meshed in together. And I'm a true believer that when you put your hardest effort into something, A, it'll either work out or B, it just wasn't meant for you and something better is in store for you. Mm -hmm. I'm a true, true, true believer in that. That's how my parents raised me. That's how like I live my life. If I put my all into something, if it doesn't work, like for example, the face top 100, I put my all into it. I didn't get into it. I literally was not harsh. I was like bummed. Like I didn't make it obviously, mm, yeah. but I know I truly believe in my heart that there is something better planned for me down the line that isn't phase or maybe it's phase in the future. I have no idea, but I, I know I tried my best and if it didn't work. Then there's nothing. It's out of my hands. You know what I'm saying? It just yeah. wasn't for me. So yeah. So when TikTok came around, I mean, I've been, and then it continued like the back to the video game thing. I've been playing video games like throughout my whole life, you know? Mm -hmm. so but the content creation was always just like i want to make it i really want to make this a successful youtube channel i really want to make it i really want to put my creativity to work and show it to the world and do meaningful things like i really really wanted that when tiktok came around um i remember like november 2019 hearing about tiktok i was like bro i'm never downloading this app because i would always see people repeat like like repost their stuff on instagram and I was like, bro, I'm I literally, I will literally never download this app. It's stupid. Like, it's dumb. It seems so lame. Like, I, anyways, I'm watching half of people's TikToks on my Instagram. I'm never downloading this app. And then uh, the pandemic hits. Um, start working from home. Like, you know what? Let me just like download this app. See what like everybody's talking about. Yeah, I'll download the app. You know, first day I spent like half an hour, and I was like, yo, this is it's not bad. Like, there's some funny stuff on here. And then um, my roommate also downloads it. And he's like, at the time he had just lost his app. He's like, yo, I'm gonna try to like, I'm gonna try to like go big on TikTok. I'm like, okay, do your thing. And he, he's like very into coffee. So he's like, I'm gonna do like latte art. I'm gonna like see if I can like make anything that goes big. I was like, all right, do your thing. So then he would post every day. And like some of his videos would get like a thousand views and he'd get so happy. I was like, yo, that's amazing. Like a thousand views. Cause in my head, I'm comparing it to YouTube. Cause if you're, if you post a video with like, you have no followers on YouTube, you get a thousand views. Like that's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Like it's not bad. Because I'm also comparing it to my channel at the time, the one that had 750 subscribers. If I got more than a thousand views on a video, I was happy. I was like, this is a really good video. I'm happy. So my 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 roommate continued to do that. And he, he was getting somewhat success. He got like over 200 followers. And I was like, yo, that's not that's not bad at all. And then I had another really good friend who also downloaded TikTok at the time. And he was posting like daily. Like he, he went all in kind of on TikTok. And he was posting viral, not viral, he was posting funny stuff. And one video went viral. Remember, we got like 100,000 views. And dude, we were going crazy. We were like, 100,000 views? Like, that's amazing. Like, it's like, look at my followers. They're jumping. I have 6,000 followers. 
I was like, that's really impressive. Like 6,000 followers. I'm comparing it again to my subs. Like I had yeah. 750 subs and that took me over a year to get. And you got 6,000 followers in like a month just doing funny stuff. Okay. Not bad. At, not bad. Not bad. And I kept, wa- I just kept watching random stuff on, um, I kept like, and then I got more and more invested on, onto TikTok and I kept watching more and more videos. I was like, yo, like I'm full, like, and, and my job till now, I'm, I still have the same job. I'm fully into my, my job is fully in the digital world. I can't go too much into my job because it like, it'll jeopardize like my professionalism and all that. Mm-hmm. But I work in the digital world. I work in the media world. So my job, I like, I'm, and I have a master's degree in this. So like, I, I'm all about digital media. Like I know it's literally my life. It's my career. So then I was like, dude, I, like, I know a thing or two. Like, I'm sure I could like maybe go viral. So then I made an account under my name, my real name. And I started posting some of my photography and videography. And the first video I posted got like 300 likes. I was like, yo, this is not bad at all. I got like 50 followers. I was like, okay, I like this. This is, this is good. And then um, I posted a second video, but also did decent. And then at the same time, I had been going like really into Call of Duty. Because I was working from home. I'm home all the time. That's how me and my friends were connecting. We were just playing Call of Duty all the time. Continued to play together. And then one day, it kind of just hit me. I was like, dude, I see nobody posting like video games. And I'm playing all the time. And I have some good clips. I was like, I have, I have like at least 10 decent clips. I'm sure like somebody's down to watch them. So before I posted anything i swear to god i'll never forget i was on the toilet i was like let me see if the username mr woo is available because that's my psn name let me see if it's available mr woo available i bet let me just make this username i make mr woo and then for like maybe two weeks i just like studied other like content creators like other uh tiktok call of duty like call of duty players mm-hmm. i checked other people out but specifically call of duty so i looked like for example that was some of the people that were on there were like Jack Zilla was on there. Yeah. Uh, Burger was on there. Wacky was on there. I looked at a bunch of their content, what they did. I saw what some of the viral scope chat was on there too. I forgot. He, Cause he was in my head. He was like kind of like the biggest one with the most viral videos. So I looked at all those people and I was like, what are they doing? What can I do? That's different. And how can I add my storytelling, my creativity into it? So then I studied that for two weeks. And then I literally just like sent my first video on April 2nd, 2020. And I thought nothing of it, posted it. And then I check in a bit and it has like maybe like 300 views. I was like, yo, that's amazing. 300 views compared to like my thousand on YouTube that I get like for a whole video's lifetime. This is crazy good. Got like 20 followers. I bet. And then I started doing this thing where anytime I would play, I would literally just be like, yo guys, follow me on TikTok, follow me on TikTok. Especially if I did good. If I did good in a game, because I'm playing all the time at this point in my life. If I did good in a game, guys, please follow me on TikTok. My name is Mr. Woo Woo. Spelt the same. Follow me, follow me, follow me. And then after like the first day, the first video did really well. For me, it was like a thousand views. I was like, this mm-hmm. is amazing. After, and so I post, started posting every day. Second day, I posted another video. Third video, third day, I posted another video. Fourth day, I posted another video. After one week, I had a combined like 6,000 views. And I was like, this is so amazing. I remember, I so I texted my brother. I was like, yo, dude, look, I have 6,000 views in a week. Like the potential of this could be huge, man. Like these are the number. like I, like these 6,000 views on my YouTube channel that I put like my absolute hardest effort into. Like each video would literally take me like maybe 10 to 15 hours to make on my other YouTube channel. I was like, these videos I did all in like less than half an hour. And look, look how many views I have. It's like, dude, that's amazing. Keep it up. I was like, I'm going to keep it up. So then I started getting more creative and I started adding my voice over. And I really noticed anytime I added my voice, it really enticed the viewer to stay in the video as long as possible. Because sometimes they're really there. You want them to watch till the punchline or till the action or whatever. And it's sometimes hard to keep your audience till there. So let's say mm-hmm. the video is 15 seconds, the punchline or whatever, the main part of it, the trick shot, let's say is at 12 seconds. To hold them to 12 seconds is so hard, especially if the first 10, 11 seconds are boring. So I decided, let me try like with a voiceover, just saying random stuff, see if that helps. And that helped so much. My first ever viral video was actually a rush video. And uh, that's my play style. Like I never really changed my play style. My play style is always to, to rush. Mm-hmm. So I had this series where like I'll just rush every single map. So I did the first ever rushing. It was crash. I was on offense. And I rushed straight through mid, went to their spawn, and got a triple kill. And that was my first ever viral, like, video to go viral. 
hit the for you page officially and i was mind blown after the first day i think it had like maybe thirty thousand views i was like are you kidding me i hit like 200 followers i was like dude the potential of this app is insane like i don't know what people are waiting for to get on this but i'm going all in on tiktok literally going all in and one of the biggest things that i learned from the other creators was i really paid attention to how they like branded themselves and one of the biggest things that all of them did was like hey follow me on twitch follow me on youtube follow me on instagram hit up my discord come to follow me on snapchat everybody was pushing so many their audience they're they were trying to funnel their audience into a million different ways yeah that they really get lost in the sauce kind of thing mm -hmm. so i was like i'm going all in only on tiktok right now I, and you know how you can add an instagram or youtube yeah. i had none of that i didn't even have like an email to reach out to it was only TikTok. If you want to hit up Mr. Woo, Woo it was only on TikTok. And I followed one person for, till I got like 100K, I only followed one person who was Burger because I used to watch his videos. I mean, still do, but like at the time, I used to watch his videos a lot. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that first video, the rushing video went off and I was like, dude, I'm all in. And then that's when I started posting twice every single day. And I really noticed what the secret sauce for me that I felt about the rushing video that was, was I was giving instructions on how to rush. Yeah. So there was a voiceover. There was me talking. There was a punchline when I got a triple call, right? So that's like 12 seconds down the line. So that's like the, like the, you know, the, the story arc kind of, because mm -hmm. I always see my TikToks as a story arc, you know? Yeah. So the story arc was kind of the triple kill. I need to get my audience to the triple kill. How can I do this? The voiceover. Voiceover is working amazing. My second video to go viral was I hit an ace of knife. And I just made this up. I was like, yo, my friend bet me $1,000 to like knife the whole team. And this is what happened kind of thing. And that video took off too. Just took off. And then I just started experimenting with different things, different voiceovers, different, um, uh, different series. All those things did amazing for me. And one of my biggest things was I kept learning from, from my past videos. Mm -hmm. At first, everybody knows this, but TikTok comments are like probably the most toxic on any platform. At first, people would like talk the most like crap to me they would smack talk me and then that's why like i read comments but i rarely pay attention to them like i literally don't care at all 99.9% .9 of any of the hateful comments you get are from random people hiding behind an anonymous account so i never let that get to me anyways so i i rarely read like the hateful comments but when you grow your brand your loyal audience will always come back and they'll always have your back so now majority of my like 99% of my comments are like nice things there's always like that one or two haters so yeah so anyways, my biggest thing was when I started, I kept learning and I kept putting back whatever I learned into my new, into my newer videos. And that helped me exponentially into growing my, into growing my, my channel. And what I really feel like I brought to TikTok gaming that wasn't there on any other platform, on any other, like not just Call of Duty, but like Fortnite, any other game people were playing was I really brought the storytelling aspect of like a story arc. So like mm -hmm. tap, talk, smack, get smacked, for example. That's like my most popular series. It's what helped probably garnish, bring like probably over half of my audience, half of my view, a third or half of my views kind of thing. That helped me so much with my growth because I realized when people like are there for a full story that you can get in 30 to 40 seconds, they'll watch it. Mm -hmm. And I learned as well because I didn't have any TikTok friends. Nobody else was doing this. I didn't know any creators. I didn't start collabing with people to like September. So from April to September, like five months, I was doing my thing on my own. So I learned that when you watch, when you have people watching your video for longer, retaining the audience for longer, it helps exponentially with your video. That's what sends it to the for you page. Mm -hmm. So for example, if a video is 30 seconds. It's being watched 90% of the time. So like, let's say 26 seconds, it will go to the for you page hundred percent. And that's how you'll get followers that tell you get traction. So I just kept going off what I learned. I watch, I, I would watch a bunch of videos online of how people grew, what they do, what they're not doing. And then I would jump on trends if I could. I would make my own trend if I could, like go go, for example. Like that's the stupidest thing ever. <laughs> but it's also like it's like now my thing, it's part of my brand. And the more I I would say literally like if I could pick like the most important thing in all of this, it was for me to grow my brand. Like that's until now. Even though like I'm almost at a million on TikTok, like 140 on YouTube, it's insane. These numbers like make no sense to me. Till now, I still believe I'm a still a, a brand new content creator in this world in the gaming sphere. Yeah, I feel feel like I'm new. I'm new to this uh, industry. I'm new to this world. Like some of these people that have like obviously more numbers than me or even similar numbers to me, they've been doing it for like 
five, 10 years. They've been streaming for five, six years. They've been doing YouTube for 10 years on the same channel. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I feel so blessed that TikTok really helped me. It was like a catalyst. It really helped me explode. And now I'm trying to maintain and capitalize off this like exposure that I got and trying to like, plat it plateaued for sure. But now I'm trying to bring it up and build my brand. Brand awareness is so important. So like go, go slaughterhouse, like talk, smack, get smacked. All those things, those are all part of my brand and like my positivity, for example. That's all my mission. So bringing my brand back into my videos is also super important. That's what helps grow you. That's what helps people know who you are. Because if you if you if you have one video that goes viral for something random, for example, like share share this video if you like if you like Black Ops and comment if you like uh, Modern Warfare stuff like that. You might go viral, but like no one's gonna remember your brand or remember you because of a video like that. Yeah. To really go off, you really have to focus on building your brand because that's what sets you apart. And then going back to what I was saying about I wasn't pushing anything about TikTok. I, that's, I feel like that's what I learned from the previous COD creators that were on TikTok before me. I started slowly funneling my audience one platform at a time. So after I grew on TikTok, maybe I, I hit... So after the first month, I think I hit like 100,000, which is absolutely mind-blowing. Um, after, I think like a, maybe I think after two months it was, or maybe a month and a half, I had like maybe around 200,000. That's when I was like, all right, now I'm going to make a YouTube. Let me like these clips. So I'll do like a trailer, for example. Like I'll do a talk, smack, get smacked show a 30 second of it. And then at the end, be like, yo, if you want to watch the full thing, go to my YouTube. Something like that. I never made a video like, hey guys, just made a YouTube, go follow me. It was yeah. always like kind of like a trailer thing because that also helps with your, your brand awareness and helps with the TikTok algorithm as well. So then I made YouTube and then I only stuck on YouTube for, uh, for like three months before I pushed like an Instagram or a Twitter. But I just want to, I actually want to make an important, uh, I forgot to say this, but I want to make an important comment. When I started, before I even started my YouTube, back to my brand awareness, I wasn't pushing like a YouTube in people's face. What happened was people started commenting, please make a YouTube, please, yeah. please, please. We want a YouTube from you. And then I was like, okay, now I'm going to make a YouTube. So I made a YouTube and then people started following my YouTube. And then the next thing was like, please start streaming. Please, please start streaming. And then before I funneled my audience to some, another platform, I was like, okay, I set a goal. I was like, hey guys, I'll start streaming if I hit hundred K on YouTube. And then we hit that like July 1st. If you think about it, I started April, April, May, June. So in like almost three months, I had 100,000, which is insane to say aloud. I had 100,000 followers on my YouTube channel within almost three months of starting. Under three months, technically. Which is, like when I say this out loud, like I literally cannot believe it. Because if you had told me like at the beginning of that year, hey, you're going to like be... A TikTok, like you're going to be... not. I don't like the word famous at all. Yeah, you know, like you're you. going to grow an audience on TikTok... And you're gonna get a hundred thousand followers on you, uh, subscribers on YouTube. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, that makes no. In three months, I've been busting my butt to try uh, and grow this channel. I have 750 subscribers. There's no way that's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm literally like like the amount of support and the amount of like like things that were happening was just like it just made absolutely no sense. Like the whole journey till now, like I I cannot believe what is happening. I swear to God. I cannot believe the journey that is like right now. Cause it's not even technically been a year since I put my first TikTok. You told me one year ago today, your Mr. Woo Woo is going to be a YouTube channel. You're going to have accumulated over a million followers, subscribers on all your platforms. You're going to be full-time streaming and you're going to be making content creation, playing video games. I swear to God, I'll probably punch you up. Like, what are you doing? That makes no sense. I like literally do not believe you. That absolutely makes no sense. But TikTok was my catalyst. And that's why till now I tell people, dude, jump on TikTok. Even though TikTok is so saturated now. Because mm -hmm. when I hopped on, so many people other hopped on, they really saw the success of it. Like the numbers I got, like that's not normal. That's literally not normal at all. Yeah, 100%. To grow that huge, that exponentially on every on TikTok and then on, on YouTube and then on Instagram. Like those numbers, those are not normal numbers to just grow, especially in the gaming world where it's already so saturated and 99% of the audience are already at 0.01 of content creators. You know what I'm saying? Like the Nick Merckx and the Tim the Tam Man and all those people, they, they, majority of the audience of, of Twitch or of in general in gaming industry, they go to them. Maybe not 99, but I would say like 1% of the top creators have like 90% of the audience. So even like breaking a boundary into this industry is so extremely difficult. And that's why it's everybody's dream. Like that's why I've been wanting to make YouTube videos for, since I was a small kid because it's so hard to make it. It's like 
living a dream job for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. I don't, anyways, my point was when people saw my TikTok taking off, they're like, yo, this is absolutely like, it makes absolutely mind blowing. It makes no sense. Like there's no word to describe how crazy this is. So many people jumped on so many people. And now if, if I go through my for you page, every single literally every other video i'll see a new face i've never seen before because at one point i recognized all the faces that were on the for you page now every day is a new face every day is a new face so people started jumping on it and now it is so saturated but still i truly do believe the organic growth that tiktok still offers is beyond any other platform beyond youtube beyond instagram beyond twitter beyond snapchat spotlight tiktok is still the move and it's not too late to get on the boat. I'll say this. I used to say the ship has not sailed, but the ship has sailed. But you still have time to jump off the dock and swim and hold on to the ship. It's not too late yet. Yeah. Like, for example, there's a guy um, who recently just popped off. Tim, his name is Timmy Toucans or something like that. He, like, drives around um, hitting, like, he, where he drives around the superstore with a car and just kills people with a car, pretty much. He's killing it, dude. He, he's garnered, like, hundreds of thousands of on followers on on. Um, on uh on tiktok and he streams he like averages over 150 if not over 200 people like he's killing it so it's not too late but it is definitely very very hard like, for example now my brother's trying to hop on <laughs> like the, his name is dr Wu. Wu. shout out to my brother dr Wu. go check him out <laughs> but he's having a hard time it's not easy anymore and to contrast that when i started a bunch of my friends who i gamed with like they're like yo mr like mr Wu is getting like has a hundred thousand in a month. Let me hop on some, for example, like some of the guys who I used to game with who also jumped on are like my cousin Hidden Man, my friend Shavas, my friend Fayez. They all jumped on and they are literally like combined, they all have like over 300 followers and they started streaming. They made YouTubes, they made Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, in contrast to that, and my brother, my brother has a gra is studying graphic design and he's very creative. He gets paid to shoot things like he's very well versed with the camera and stuff. Shavas, on the other hand, he's never edited a video and he taught himself. But last year he was able to, he has like maybe 80, 90,000 followers now. Even though with his minimum skills, he was able to grow this audience of like 90,000, 80,000 people. But now my brother, who's very well versed, knows how to edit, is having a difficulty time, of a difficult time, even though this is like backhanded and like, and he's really good at the game. But just my contrast where it's difficult, but still not impossible. Yeah, and I also got to give a shout out to YouTube Shorts. I my my YouTube my YouTube channel is broken right now, so don't ask me about my YouTube channel. But some of my friends, other TikTok creators, have gained literally like tens of thousands of subscribers on YouTube because of YouTube Shorts. So definitely, if you feel like your TikToks are not working, then try YouTube Shorts. It is the move. Yeah, right now. That's what a lot of people are saying. I know. Sorry, that, sorry, sorry. That was so long. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That took forever. But go yeah, ahead. Good, good. I know Wacky just had a video go mm -hmm. over a million. Um, yeah. and, and my YouTube channel, um, I, I hopped on the YouTube shorts and I don't, I don't average that much views, but I had a video go over a thousand, which was nice. I haven't seen that, Amazing. those numbers in a while, um, on my YouTube channel. So I definitely think YouTube shorts is, is something that, that could possibly have potential. I'm not real sure. I've, I've never personally went through YouTube shorts like anyone else's. I just post mm -hmm. them. Um, but I, I think I think there's potential there for sure. 100%. Yeah, like, and I, I talking about Wacky, I'm pretty sure it was him. He tweeted that it took him, like, a year or something to get to 10,000 by, like, December mm -hmm. or by the by the New Year, sorry. And then now he has, like, 20,000. He's like, yeah. it took me, like, a month or three months or whatever of that amount to get to 20,000. Yeah. So that's, like, the potential of it. And, like, Sally's a dog has been posting a lot on, on shorts. Um, Steffi Evans has been posting a lot on shorts. And some people's stuff has been taking off. And there's been a huge discussion of like, should I post on my main to make a different account? Mm -hmm. People were just like, just freaking do it, man. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I, I had a different account for a while, but then I was like, I mean, what am I doing on my main channel anyway? So it's mm -hmm. like, I'm just post on there. It's, yeah. I don't know. I, I think, I think what would, but another, like one of the main compliments people have been saying is like, even though I've like blown up and gain, gained tens of thousands, if I post like a normal video, that's not a short, it's not getting as much love. And I feel like to combat that, a good thing to do would be like to do a combination of both. So maybe half your content, sorry, excuse me, half your content being short and then the other half being normal, like your mm -hmm. normal eight minute, 10 minute YouTube videos. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that's a bad idea at all. Um, yeah. are you, are you on uh, reels at all? Yeah. So 
I actually, so I've been on Instagram for a couple of months now, maybe like six months. I have like tw- over like 25,000 uh, Instagram followers and um, I post, it's so easy. So what I, all I do is I literally just take my TikToks and I post them on Instagram and then yeah, every, yeah, and then, yeah, it's so easy. Yeah. So I'm just literally, I actually spoke to my good friend, um, the golden balance, who's not in gaming. He's like, you, you probably see him on your for you page. He, he's one of the cooks on, he's like one of the biggest cooks on, on TikTok. I've known his brother for like 10 years. So like coincidentally, like I was like, yo, is your brother the golden balance? He's like, yeah, I was like, I bet give him my number. Like, and then now we're homies. So we're always talking about like different stuff. So I was like, is Instagram worth it? This was back before I even made it. He's like, bro, hundred percent make it. It's so easy. It takes you like five minutes after you post your TikTok. literally just go post it, just yeah. do it. Plus you can post your pictures, be a more personal, you grow your brand. I was like, bro, you're right. And the funny thing is, was I actually, um, I swear to God, before I even knew who the golden balance was on TikTok, before I even downloaded TikTok, I had followed him on Instagram because somebody shared his video and I was like, yo, this guy's like legit. He's cool. He's funny. And his, like his recipes seem like really legit. <laughs> and then he would always say, cause he, he used to have this thing where he used to always say, please follow me on Instagram. I'll love you forever. If you do. And I'm like, bro, I'm already on Instagram. Like where, where, where else are you posting these videos? I had no idea it was on TikTok. <laughs> And then when I got on TikTok that when I first downloaded it, and then I saw him on there, I was like, oh, oh this makes sense. <laughs> but he was smart, bro. He, 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 his, like his Instagram has like 600,000 followers. Like that is insane. Yeah. When you have that, when you have that many followers, like one ad sponsor could literally pay you like 20 G's for like one <laughs> post. Imagine one post, like here's $20,000. He's like a year's salary for some people Yeah. to, to post one picture or one video, like, that's in, that's the that's the thing about like social media. Sometimes it just makes no sense. Sometimes yeah. the numbers are just absolutely make no sense. That's why I love it. That's why I love the digital world, man. Yeah, it's it's absolutely crazy. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, but back to real. Sorry, I keep like going no, all over good. the place. You're good. <laughs> this is the first podcast I've ever done, so thank you for real for having me. And it's like an absolute honor. So that's why like I've never really spoken out loud about this. So that's why my thoughts are like literally all over the place. I'm just like spewing everything, which I hope well, is a good thing. <laughs> no, I, that's exactly why this podcast was made because you make you know 15 to 60 second videos on TikTok. You don't get to talk about who you actually are. That's the reason that this podcast was made. So you're doing exactly what you're supposed to go ahead love you love you man that's awesome but yeah back to reels so i um when i made the instagram yeah literally i'll just repost about repost as a normal video and then the bentist literally dm me he's like bro like try reels it's better because the same because sometimes my videos would get cut off and your face and stuff exactly literally my face would get cut off he's like he's like a it's the same like um ratio uh, like ratio and whatever yeah and he's like second of all like there's a lot more reach on reels Mm -hmm. i bet so literally for the past two months, I've been posting reels. But yesterday was the first time I posted. I just wanted to see like if it made a difference. Yesterday was the first time, actually, literally first time in months where I my TikTok, my video, I post as a normal video as opposed to reel. Just to see if it will make a difference. Uh, yeah, It's good to experiment because, yeah, yeah, sometimes reels could be pushing your stuff for a while. But then it's always good to experiment because the algorithm is always changing. It's always ever ending. Like one thing that I always say and I always joke about, but it's not really funny is I've been on TikTok for almost a year, almost have a million Followers like have over hundred like fifty million views, but I still do not understand genuinely how the algorithm works, which is like crazy. Yeah. I wish I understood how it worked, but I still have no idea how it works. Well, I mean, I have like an idea, but yeah, I I I think that there's because sometimes uh, with reels it will be uh, like my TikTok will my TikTok will be too long, so then I'll post as a normal video yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. Um. But I, I, I've had it where my, my regular video hits the explore page or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then Over that the will, reel? yeah. And that will get some views. Um, but I've also had it where, you know, my reel will do pretty good. So like, I think there's some give and take. I'm not really sure what, what the difference between the two algorithms are versus explore mm-hmm. versus just a normal reel. I'm not real sure. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anyone knows, but, uh, I, here's, here's my opinion. I feel like reels when it first hit, people were a lot more focused on it. Mm-hmm. But now maybe like it's kind of, I don't want to say fallen off, but kind of like gotten a little less popular mm-hmm. because people are like, oh, we don't really like this. We don't really like the for you page on this. Well, I'd rather just use TikTok kind of mentality. But I did notice like from posting my reels, none of them like ever did like over crazy. Like my my most views on an Instagram video is like it's hit the explore page before. And like my most popular video on Instagram has like 40,000 views. Mm-hmm. 
and it has like maybe five or six thousand likes, which is a lot b- above my average. On average, like my TikTok, my Call of Duty videos will get maybe like anywhere from like fifteen hundred to like two thousand. Like that's normal. So if it's like six thousand, that's a lot above average. My reels, I don't think he's ever even hit like over thirty five hundred. So that's why yesterday I was like, let me try see if maybe the algorithm has changed, see what's going on. Let me check it right now, actually. Let me see how many like views or likes this is at because I posted it yesterday. Let me see, right next to you. It has 10,000 views. That's actually really good. 2,600. That's a little, bu- uh, that's that's above average. 2,600 is a, b- a bit above average than a real. Yeah. So for the next couple of videos, I might try to mess around and post them as videos just to try things out. It's always good to try different things. Mm-hmm. Cause like I said, the algorithm is always changing. Yeah. I think it's super important. I think a lot of people like there, there is some truth to, to finding out what works and like exercising that. But mm-hmm. I think a lot, some people may overdo that. How, how important yeah. is that to you to, to experiment and maybe reinvent some content and, and reevaluate things? That's a great question. I think I think I this is something when you were when you were talking about this, I was like, man, I forgot to mention that. So I think that's something that's very important, especially in the beginning stages, to really like try everything. Like nothing mm-hmm. will ever be kind of a bad idea unless it's a really, really bad, stupid <laughs> idea. But trying different things, experimenting, it never it never hurts you. It literally will never hurt you. Almost never. I don't want to say unless like the idea is really stupid. Like you do something like, you know, hateful or like yeah. whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like trying a new idea, like you never know what happens. That's the thing about like, especially TikTok. You never know what's going to take off. Like um, somebody tweeted this the other day and I actually replied. I quote tweeted and I said, my talk, my talks might get smacked. I've never, I almost never posted it. The first one. Cause I was like, yeah, that's kind of whatever. Might not even post it. I was like, and then I think that day I started, I think I was low at con- for content. And I was like, I'm just going to post this. I posted it and now that series legitimately is like maybe over a third of my views and probably accounts for like if half, if not more of my followers joining because of that series, which was like, let me try it. And it kind of boom, just took off yeah. another series that I recently did, for example. And this is like, yeah, it's beginning in the beginning stages where you mess around, try different things, but it's also important to, to keep doing it because in the beginning, when I first started, I was, obviously I was experimenting with everything, like Russian videos, class videos, like I was rushing with a, a different series, whatever, whatever it took off, I really took off with, and I continued to do it. And then my talks might get smacked. They slowly, like the views started slowly declining because it kind of got repetitive. You know, it's like the same thing, somebody saying something stupid, talking smack, being racist or whatever. And then I knifed them or I killed them. So it kind of got repetitive. So I wasn't really seeing the same like viewage, the same like return I wanted. And then I felt like I was steady for a while. And then I started like sitting down, like what other ideas can I do? So then I started like, for example, doing a bit more war zone. Cause I, I was almost strictly never war zone. I only did like search, uh, uh, multiply, like search and destroy. Mm-hmm. And then recently, so it's always good to stay on your toes. Don't always get too comfortable. And the example I wanted to make was literally like two months ago. I felt like, okay, I really need a new like series. Something that's consistent, something that I know will maybe do well. Let me experiment. But something that I, if it does well, like I'll have so many different ideas. And that's when I did like Warzone calculations. And that was like one of the coolest things because uh, I don't know if you know, Activision retweeted the video. They literally yeah. like yeah. retweeted the video, which I'm like, and I'm like, do they always do this? And I went on their chat and I went on their Twitter and I scrolled for a while and they have never like done this before, at least until like, at least like a couple of months before me. And I was like, this is so cool. And I was like, that's why I was proud of myself. I was like, this is a new initiative that I experimented with and it took off. But there's also a lot of failures that didn't work, which is completely fine as well. Like I did a video, for example, where um, I, I thought maybe it would do a good idea where, cause you know, we get uh, DMCA if you're streaming on Twitch, if you have music. So I was like, yo, I'm gonna make my own song. You guys help me make it. It didn't do too well. So I was like, I am not gonna continue it. Even though I, I want to, it's a cool idea, but th- there's the thing too. It's always like, Yes, I'm saying all this thing, but it's also important to like not always focus on just like, I want to get views. I want to get views. I want to get views. If you genuinely enjoy making a specific type of content or you enjoy playing a specific game, even if it doesn't do well for you, like just do it. Because at the end of the day, you're doing this, especially if your goal is to do it for the rest of your life, you want to do something you enjoy. If you're doing something just because of views, just for numbers, just for clout, like it's, it, you, it really like starts taking a, like taking a dab taking a stab at your like mental health at like how you're feeling about doing this you're like oh i have to do another video you're, like, you're not happy anymore 
Yeah. As opposed to like something you genuinely enjoy, like that video, that Fiverr video. Yeah, it didn't do well. And now I just said like, maybe I won't do a second part, but I most likely will because that process was genuinely enjoyable for me. Even though the video wasn't that amazing at all in, in terms of like how it performed, but still like I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So that's important. And it's also important, even a video doesn't do well, but it's growing your brand awareness. That's also important. For example, when I, when like last summer, when all the, all like the BLM, BLM stuff is happening, all that stuff, like all the social justice stuff, that's, that stuff is important to me. So I made a video specifically, even though I had no idea how, it, like how it would perform, this is very different from my normal videos and normal stuff. I was like, let me do a video that's important to me important to what I stand for, something I'll enjoy. And I made a video and I kind of intertwined it into my brand and I put it out and it did, it did good. It actually did pretty decent. So like, yes, make sure you enjoy your stuff and make sure you're not always just chasing clout because like, that'll get you nowhere. Like do things that you enjoy. Numbers are important. Like some people say they're not important at all, but like, if you want to seriously be successful in this industry, then your numbers are somewhat important. Cause that's what people look at. That's what companies look at. That's what sponsorships look at. So it's not everything, but keep in mind, you want to enjoy what you do. And if mm -hmm. you're not enjoying it, then you're literally just like, then it doesn't really become enjoyable anymore. It just becomes like, I'm doing this job. Mm -hmm. Which is not a bad thing. I don't know. It's, 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 there's like a, there's like a, there's like a mixed line, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's, I try to like always find that middle line where I'm enjoying, but I'm also like reaching to grow my brand, grow my audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, I think sometimes a lot of people have the wrong idea when it comes to to content on TikTok uh, in general, like the I need to go viral every single video. Like that's mm -hmm. what they're a lot of time or not a lot, but just sometimes I put out videos on TikTok for the people who support me because I know that they're they're there and they want to and they're following me. So I want them to see it and I want them to be mm -hmm. able to to enjoy that piece of content because I know mm -hmm. they they mess with what I'm doing mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. So I think, um, for sure. Yeah. I want other people to join, but not all the time. Am I making content for the for you page for some kid to tell me that I'm, I'm just that I'm in a bot lobby or something like that. <laughs> I dude, actually literally going off that. That's so important to say because it's, it, it, it it's happened to me. And it's been happening to me for a really long time. So when I first started April, I hit like half a million in like July, maybe before July, maybe like June-ish, mid-June-ish, okay? Half a mil. And that took two months and a half. Now I'm almost a year in. So it took me a quarter year to get half a mil. And now I'm three quarters of a year almost in, and I still have not hit my second mil. I'm at like 900, like 15,000 or something like that, okay? Mm-hmm. But when I had this half mil, I had like nine, 10 million likes. Okay. Now I have like over 30 million. Actually, no, I had way less than 10 million likes. I had way less. But what's so important, what was so important for me is even though I didn't exponentially grow my audience, I know that my main, like my main supporters, my main followers still mess with my content because mm -hmm. that's so important. You want to make sure your brand is growing. You don't want to just keep getting like, because, because here's the point. Here's the thing. If you're getting all these followers, but they're not like loyal or they, they're, they're not aware of your brand and they're not there to grow with you, like they can disappear like this. You know what I'm saying? So it's so important to keep engaging. That's the word engaging to continue to engage your audience with your content. So when I, even though like I didn't grow as fast anymore in terms of followers, but my views skyrocketed, like continue to go up. My likes continue to go up. And that's because my main audience is growing stronger and stronger and stronger. And I, like I said, I still can consider myself a brand new creator in this world. So to know that my brand is continuing to grow with the amount of views, the amount of likes, comments, engagement, that means a lot more to me than like growing like this number of followers that who knows if they'll be loyal or not. Mm -hmm. so, so even though it sucked that like the following for sure slowed down, but I know the, the, the levels of loyalness or whatever have definitely increased throughout this time. So that's why I'm very happy. Because again, brand awareness, growing your brand is so super important, especially for someone who like me is like still brand new in this world. I'm still a little baby, a little bot compared to like the big dogs who've been doing it for a year. Like Nick Merck's like, yes, he has amazing numbers, but this man's been doing it for like 15 years, man. So me one year in to get this far to grow my brand, 
I'm so thankful and so happy. And I know the catalyst of TikTok helped me exponentially, mm -hmm. exponentially helped me. And that's why, like, I don't want to take that for granted. That's why I want to continue to grow and continue to really grow my brand and brand awareness because that's so important. And that's why back to, like, I even forgot to mention this, but it's so important. That's why I have such a strong mission that I truly believe in because not only do I believe in it, but it's also like part of like my brand and everything that I stand for. You know what I'm saying? Like this, of this mission of sp spreading positivity in the gaming world. And that's like, it's such a broad thing, but it's also so important because unfortunately like the gaming world is so, so, so toxic. Like it's just like majority of my comments when I first started to talk to my guests, I'm like, what do you expect? This is COD. Like, Oh, I admit, like you guys are, you guys are like, like snowflakes. Like you're a snowflake. This is normal. Like, what are you talking about? Like, if it wasn't like this, I don't want my COD lobby then. I'm like, that's like, it's come to the point of toxicity in the gaming world where if you're not toxic as a content creator to some degree, then people don't even want to mess with you. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm like, that's not how I rock. I'm not going to be, be toxic just for views and just because the industry's like that. I'm not like that whatsoever. I'm like, I'm a positive person in real life. I'm mad chill. Like I always like being open and helpful to people. And that's who I am. So I'm like, I would love to be, I would love for that to be a part of my brand, my identity in this gaming world. And that's why like being this positive influence, I'm not perfect at all. Like, of course I have flaws, but trying to be as positive, as enjoyable as possible in this world, in this industry is such a big part of my brand. Cause that's something I believe in, but whatever your brand or your mission may be, it doesn't have to be spreading positivity. It can be whatever it wants, but make sure that you carry that in everything you do in all your content, in your posts, like make sure your brand awareness is always there. Your mission is always surrounding you like a halo. Like at the end of the day, growing really depends on your brand. It really truly depends on your brand. It's so important. I can't like stress that enough. Like from all my experience, uh, my work experience in the past and until now in like the media world in the, in my master's degree, like brand awareness is so important. It's so important. That's why I'm really still focusing on my brand awareness and my brand growth. Um, when it comes to, to looking for the future and um, where you want to be, is there, do you, are you thinking of like an end goal as end goal, completely just full-time nothing else but content creation and in this or or what's that look like for you that, i mean that's a, dude that's a fantastic question and that's something like i've seriously struggled with my entire life because um put aside like uh put aside youtube put aside content creation in terms of like my professional world i've always strived to like reach a goal and when i reach i'm like All right, what's next mm -hmm. what's next that's happened to me in so many different things of my life, especially in like my career of, of in the media world. Cause it's, it's been a, a like the dream, the job that I have right now, like the, the full-time job that I have is like literally legitimately a dream job that I've worked so hard to get. Like I literally got my master's degree specifically to get this job. Even when I got my master's degree, I was like, this is amazing. Like, how did I get a master's degree at Northwestern university? One of the best universities in the world. I got it. And I'm like, all right, what's next? I'm like, I want this job. I got the job. And then literally when I'm at the job, I'm like, all right, what's next? Like, let me just keep, let me just keep rolling. Like, let me just keep rolling. What's next? What's next? And that's kind of my personality of like, I'm like never content. And I don't know why I'm always like, I kind of hate it to be honest. I, I, sometimes I wish like I can just like sit back and really enjoy where I'm at. I really truly wish I had that in me. But for some reason right now, I'm like, I'm still young. I know 27 is old to some people, but I'm like, I'm still young. I'm so early in my career. Let me keep going next. Let me keep going next. So that's why I've truly learned to like enjoy the process of everything that I'm doing. Because if I'm not enjoying the process, then I'm always going to be dreading like what's next, what's next, what's next. So I'm really seriously right now just enjoying this process of everything just moving, everything just happening. I'm le legitimately taking it day by day. Like right now, if you ask me what's your TikTok tomorrow, I swear, I don't know. I don't have a schedule. I swear to God. Tomorrow when the TikTok time to post a TikTok, I'll be like, all right, let me see what I have. Cause I, I have like notes, but I never am like, all right, this is what I'm making. I'm always like, I'm always thinking about it when tomorrow I'll be like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. Actually. I might, I might be thinking of something and then right. But to edit, actually, let me do something else. <laughs> so I'm always taking it day by day just to enjoy the process. Really enjoy what I'm doing. Cause I legitimately enjoy making this content. I legitimately enjoy playing video games and making somewhat of a living off of it. Like I enjoy it to absolute death. Like I cannot stress how much I enjoy it. So that's why if you ask me like, what's my next goal, 
I think something that's obvious is I w- truly would love to do this full time, but I feel like I'm in the point of my life where I'm not ready to do to do that. That's why at the beginning of the year, I kind of almost did it, but I didn't end up like pulling the trigger on it. My job came because it's still my dream job, the job that I have. They came, they love me to, to death up there as well. So they actually reached out to me. They're like, Hey, we saw your video that you might want to leave us. We didn't even know. <laughs> I was like, ah. They're like, but we like seriously love you at the company. We would love, how about like we find a middle ground? How about instead of working 40 hours, you work 30 hours and then you can focus on your streaming. I was like, that's literally the most perfect solution right now. Cause I, even though, yes, I feel like I am very successful, but I still do feel like I'm still new. Like I've said a million times and I, I'm still not at that level where I can just like leave my job and like open my wings and fly. Cause a lot of people do depend on me, like my family, especially financially. So I feel like I'm not there yet, but hopefully I really would love to go there. And that's why I'm kind of like taking it, I'm not taking it too hard on myself. And I'm just enjoying the process, man. Day by day, I'm just enjoying it. I'm trying to just vibe out. Like the streams are so fun. Like, like I can't, like I saying this out loud, this next sentence I'm gonna say out loud, I cannot believe I can say it. But I play video games and get paid. Like that makes absolutely no sense to the logical mind absolutely yeah. no sense so like just being able to say that and actually doing it and actually like it just living that dream is just something i'm literally will enjoy day to day and then i do have like i, I am a goal uh, minded individual so like my next if you're like to pinpoint one goal would be to like make the jump over to full-time and but i i can't tell you like when that would happen yeah i don't have like a range or a schedule of when it'll happen but like that's my next goal and i feel like it'll just be a gut feeling of when it'll feel right yeah like this is when i'm gonna do it and i'll kind of just do it yeah well mm-hmm. as as a uh a fan of your content i <laughs> i uh i hope that 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 happens and but I, so I, do, much, I do i do want you to uh to just be happy with uh with your decision and when it's right thank you it'll thank you it'll so come much. um thank you man i appreciate it well uh as we wrap up this podcast i i greatly appreciate you coming on of course, and uh, thank you for spreading, having me yeah spreading the positive vibes I, I love what you're about and what you uh you. uh spread out into the world and i i really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to do this of course man like genuinely uh texture i think what you're doing is phenomenal man like literally keep it up you are crushing the game. I know, I know, like I'm talking about numbers, but I know I can tell from like the way you're reaching out to me, the way you tweet about it, the way you talk in your other podcasts, I can tell you this is something you're very passionate about. So 100% keep up this hustle, man. The, the numbers or whatever maybe will come, but just keep up this amazing hustle, your amazing work ethic. It's so important. It's so genuine to see you do all this stuff. That's why I said, yeah, because I like checked you out. Not checked you out, but like, you know, I like <laughs> took a look at your previous work. I was like, this guy's like, I can definitely tell it's something he really enjoys doing. So definitely keep it up. And I, I really want to say like people like people like, dude, you blew up in like a, a year. But like people don't realize that I've been trying to like make it or like not make it, mm-hmm. but like trying to have a successful channel in in the content creation world for a really, really long time. Yeah. Like it take like literally like since bef- before your age, I've been trying like before you're 18, I've been trying to do it, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's hard. It's difficult, but be patient. If you truly believe in yourself and then it will truly happen and think about it this way. If it was so easy, then everybody would literally everybody would yeah, do it. And then there 100%. would be like no point in doing it because everybody would be successful at it. But to seriously make it and ma- bring an impact, bring your, your mission, your brand, your morals into this world, into this industry and make a difference into it then you truly have to keep at it, keep growing, keep growing your, like, keep growing as an individual, keep growing as a brand, keep growing as a channel. I truly believe in you, man. And I can definitely tell that you are putting a lot of effort into this. And I know you can do it 100%. I appreciate that. I yeah, appreciate of course, that. man. Of course. You're putting in the hustle and the hustle will pay off, man. It will definitely pay off. Well, I think that's an amazing note to end on. <laughs> I... Uh... I mean, Mr. Woo Woo, everyone, I appreciate you. I'll see, <laughs> go you guys. Go, baby. I'll see you guys on the next podcast. Thank you. All right, peace out. Thanks for having me again, man. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to yeah. the homie. And go, because get... or go check no. out Mr. Woo Woo. You got to no, go there. No, you got to no, go no. there. Yes. <laughs> no, but for real, Texture, can't wait to see you doing even bigger things, bro. And I genuinely appreciate you for having me. Like an, but This is an honor. This is the first time I've ever made it. I've done a podcast in my life. So thank you for the absolute honor. 
of uh, of having you, man. Such a cool, cool thing to do. And sorry, like like I said, sorry I was all over the place. <laughs> a, this is my first ever podcast. B, half my mouth doesn't work, so mm-hmm. my brain's all over the place. But yeah, I really enjoyed like kind of sharing my story. And if anyone has any questions, please like tweet at me or whatever. I'd love. I, I'm I'm genuinely an open book. Whenever I stream, like smaller content creators will always come in, like, hey, I, like how like people always asking questions. I'm always an open book. I love helping others out. So come through if you have any questions. Let me know. 